Today we're going to talk about drop shotting again. Uh, the drop shot, I'm not going to go in the specifics of drop shotting. I'm going to show kind of some of the setups and questions that the, the basic drop shot nymphing video we did generated more questions than anything I think we've ever done on this. And a lot of them were the same questions, just over and over and over and over again. And a lot of them were about setup, but most of them were about specifics in the system. But first and foremost, I wanna go through why I think drop shotting is a far superior system to checking or any of the other Euro styles. And you need to understand there's a reason that the European styles are the way they are. In competition fishing, which they do a lot in Europe, they cannot use lead and they can't use indicators. But in the US, we can do both. And I'm, and this is, basically I show this because this is the way most of us fish most of the time. And I want you to see why I think this is a, a much superior system to check nymphing or any of the other styles where you use what's called an anchor fly where your fly is super heavy. And that was one of the biggest questions I got. And I mean, I got dozens and dozens and dozens of the same question. But first and foremost, I'm gonna walk you through the system again. I have two of them set up here. And I'm gonna walk you through this system. I don't know if you can see that right. I tried it on yellow uh, strand, so you might be able to see it better. But I want you to understand a couple things about drop shotting, specifically right now. Today, I walked out behind the shop. It's, it's April, it's April 18th, I think. The beavers have just wiped out the trees out back, which means <laughs> there's a ton of trees and branches in the water right now. And it's high and it's dirty, so I can't see them. So I have not lost a fly in like a week of fishing because of this system. And I want you to understand why this system does what it does and how it works. So I've got this little fish here set up. I put a couple rocks down. I want you to see how the whole system starts. So we start, and I put an indicator on here because people, that was the probably the fifth most positive or, or uh, question asked most often was what about with an indicator can you still do it it's, it's actually better with an indicator like this so first of all because the leads the heaviest thing leads at the very bottom of this system alright so it goes lead fly fly and the second fly is on a dropper because the and the currents obviously going this way because the fish's heads going upstream so as this thing goes along there's, you know, the lead being the heaviest element, it's gonna to go to the bottom, and that's your indicator that's telling you that you've touched bottom. And when this, when this lead touches bottom, it bounces. You get to see it or feel it if you're just, if you're doing inline, you're just tight lining. So here comes the lead and it's bouncing. That's the first thing that makes this system better than in the other systems for not losing flies. With a regular system, your lead goes to the bottom if your flies are out there two or three feet. The lead hits around stuff, and it gets stuck and it drags into it like this. And it's stuck. With a drop shot, the flies are always downstream of the lead. So here's my lead. It's bouncing. And if you've got an indicator on, it's downstream of it too. And you see everything that happens. But the key there is, is the lead doesn't really get a chance to wrap around stuff. So you hardly ever use lead e or lose lead either. It just kind of bounces. But the real key to this system is where it puts the fly. Fish seldom, just like this fish is just sitting here, they don't sit right on bottom. They sit just off of bottom. Usually their heads are about six inches off the bottom and they're, they're just scanning, they're doing this. So here's this fish and they very seldom eat below their head. So here's this fish just sitting here. So if I'm using a really heavy fly, the fly is below the fish's face. They don't tip down to pick up a fly very often. So with a drop shot system, it's coming along like this. The lead's on the very bottom telling you the fish is seeing the fly right in his mug. It's coming right at him, right in the face. He doesn't have to do anything. It just comes right at him. All he has to do is pick it up. And you get an instant, as soon as he touches it, you're gonna see it or feel it. All right, so here it comes like this. Tick right in the fish's face. Almost never do you lose flies, okay? And so the upper fly, and we go again, you can go to some of the other videos to see why we do what we do. The upper fly is on a dropper. The idea of running a two fly system is simply this. You're running two different stratas of water and probably two different types of bugs. You don't run the same bug on the system. You're not doing it just to have two on there. So obviously 
you're never going to run like this. And a lot of people think you're going to go like this through the water. You're not. You're, you're going to lead your, you're pulling against this so you feel it. So your flies are really going to run about like that. And as you can see, between those is less than a foot. So if this fish is up six inches, you're still in the strike zone. They have a tendency to move about in six inch windows, almost always up. So what does that do? It gives you two flies. And again, not going through why the flies, you can go to the other videos for that. But this fly above is generally lighter and it's usually a different style. So I got a stone fly down here and up above it, I've actually got a prince nymph in, but pretend that was a emergent fly of some sort. It could be a wet fly, anything drowned, it could be an emergent caddis, anything. But it's above your other fly on purpose. So now I'm going to go to the questions. So the first one, uh, shot versus bead, or be, shot or versus bead head or tungsten. And that's kind of what I was just talking about when I showed the fly down here. A lot of people said, is it going to impede this lower fly's ability to move? Okay, that's a great point. First and foremost, I don't generally run in line, excuse me, they were asking about being in line when you do that, like I have this one. I'm going to show you another way in a second. In line meaning eye to eye. And one of the most common questions was, does that impede its ability to move? Maybe a little bit, all right? But as opposed, I'll get to that in just a second, as opposed to having a heavy fly, whereas if I had this mega prints, I mean, I routinely get people walk in and say, do you have anything bigger than a double tungsten stone fly? I really don't get it. I don't, I, I, I never fish weighted flies. I, fit, I let the weight do it. But if I was using this tungsten bead down here, and it suddenly, instead of the split shot, and I let it go to bottom. Now it's below the fish's head. They don't eat below their head very often and really don't do it when it's dirty water. So here's the fly down below. The only time that fish is going to, if it's truly hitting bottom, and that's what you're asking the fly to do because you're replacing it with lead, if it's truly hitting bottom, it's below the fish. The only time he sees it is as it's dropping or as you hang up and give it a jerk, boom, up it comes like this, really inefficient. It's not a good way to fish. It's not efficient. It surely loses a touch. Great for me as a fly shop owner. You lose a hell of a lot of flies. You hardly lose any with this. So instead of having a weighted or an anchor fly down below that you're kind of guessing where it is, this way my lead's touching bottom, I always know where that fly is. It's always in that thing's mug. It's right in his face. Boom, gotcha. Okay, so the bottom fly, does the bottom fly being in line hamper the fly's ability to move? It's a great question. I'm going to show you the other system and how I do it. But <clears throat> first of all, when I do an inline system like this, and I use two different styles, I'm going to show you the other one. I've got this one inline, and I've got this one on a dropper loop with my lead here. This is what I do most of the time. But in the spring, in big fly, and there's an exception to this. I mean, if it's, if it's a big fly, say, you know, a rubber leg, a worm, a bigger larva, like anything, anything like a big crane fly larva, anything that's really not moving much. Stone flies, they're basically right here. That's pretty much when I go in line because there's more tangles with the other system. But if it's a big fly like this, I can go in line, no problem. Matter of fact, I do it with flies, anything size 12 or bigger, it's gonna go in line because it's virtually tangle free. But there's some drawbacks to that. So if it's smaller than that, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna have the dropper, it's gonna have a dropper loop, and I'm gonna show you how to do that because that's a really common question too. But it's gonna be on a dropper line like that. It's still gonna be up above, you know, up above the lead. It's gonna float back a little bit further up like this. But that's one of the things, one of the factors that makes me go to that as opposed to in line. In line is virtually tangle free. With a dropper loop, of course, you're gonna get more of them. So all right, is that hamper bite? Okay. Changing the bottom fly was the next one. I should have these memorized because I've got asked so many times. But <clears throat> changing the bottom fly, and this is where it's going to kind of segue into the next one too. Does it hamper the fly's ability to move was the first one, and the second one is just, you know, changing the bottom fly. The reason I like to use double droppers when on, I use my upper flies always on a dropper, 
and a lot of times the bottom ones. The reason I like to do that is because if I use this, if this is in line and I want to change it, everything gets changed. I personally use a 16 inch drop or space between these almost always and a four inch dropper. So I got four inches, it's hanging down there and I'm running at about that angle is what you'll probably be running. So they're really only less than a foot apart, maybe even eight, 10 inches. But to the fourth question, loops versus tie, all right, tying, I told you it was gonna segue, but I'm gonna kind of jump. Loops versus tying it in line, and does it change or hamper? So first of all, if it's a big fly, it will not hamper it, it'll be fine. But if you're gonna run a double loop, the next most common question was, can you use the tag of your blood knot or your surgeon's knot? And the answer is yeah, you can. But the reason I don't do that is because of this. Because I just told you I like to have a 16 inch gap between these two flies. So if I use the tag end of my leader, all right, I tie a, a blood knot, and a lot of people do that, blood knot or a surgeon's knot, and I use that tag end that's hanging out, all right? And I change the fly two or three times, now that's only got this much to tie off of. Okay, well I better redo it. At that point, I have to change everything because if I'm gonna change this knot, this distance is gonna change. I just as soon use the loop. And so I've got a loop here, it was a very common question, is the loop. And I like the loops for two or three reasons. First and foremost, it has a, it doubles it up off the side. I've got a blood knot right here, all right? That's what it bumps into, goes down and hits. You see how it's hanging off the side there? It's doubled up, so it holds off, doesn't spin around. That's another real common question. How do you keep it from spinning? First and foremost, I never make my loops more than four inches long. That keeps a lot of it, and that doubled up part keeps it from getting down around the, the line so much. So to do that, you simply take, this is a, it's a little bit longer than this. I do, you know, just tie these out. It's a perfection loop. So if, you're, if you don't like to tie them, do a whole bunch of them at home. Just keep them with you. It's a four inch perfection loop. I'm gonna slide this up. And that, by the way, is another reason I like to use these loops because I can move that up the line if I want to, if I think the fish are above it. So here's the blood knot. Let's say I'm changing my fly and I've changed it two or three times, now my loop's a little bit short. So I take this blood or this perfection loop, you put it on the back side of your leader, and it's as simple as pushing that through the hole and tighten it down around it. Okay, now so there's a new one. Doesn't take but a second to do. Now your line, your fly's got the, you can change it. You don't change your whole system down here. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a cold that would kill Johnny. So, there's that loop. So back to this, the other reason I said just a second ago is that frequently if I think the bugs, especially when you've got a lot of caddis, caddis start to move and they're pupating, right? They're going through the surface film and they're moving up. The fish are always looking above them. Sometimes if I'm not, if I'm not getting the number of eats I think I should, I just slide that up. You don't need a knot, just slide it up there, give it a pull. And you'll know, if you touch a fish up there, you'll know that you gotta move up higher in the water column. You just slide them up, put a knot below it. Okay, so what else did I miss here? Using up the tag, that was pretty much it. So I'm gonna go right back to this and just kind of go brief overview. There's a tangle. This is what happens when Johnny fishes. So here you go. I'm in line. I've got two flies on. We're gonna have two flies for a reason. We're gonna have the upper fly. It's gonna be a different style of fly. This fly on the bottom is gonna be right in the fish's face. If you're gonna use smaller flies, put a loop on the bottom. By the way, if you put a loop on the bottom, lengthen this dropper to eight inches. I usually use six inches on the bottom. It's in the other videos. So ideally, if you've got an indicator on, the water speed on the top, and this is great for beginners, by the way, because a lot of people have trouble controlling their indicator. When you do this, the indicator is always downstream of your flies. And with a different style, style of rig, that can be a problem. With this style, it doesn't matter because you're dragging the lead like this and the flies are just free floating like that. And you always see it touching, you always see your eats. So, in line, bottom fly, lead down here. I like to go with an in line on fly size 12 or bigger. I use a dropper loop on size 14s and smaller. 
On the upper fly, I'm gonna run a four inch dropper. I have two of them on there, so I just put that on there. I put a four inch dropper on, that one's slidable. Keep it at a 16 inch difference between the two. Bingo, fly's coming at you like this. You'll feel or see everything. And I think we got all those questions answered right there. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, a lot of people are asking me lately about tippet rings. And I personally don't use tippet rings. I have no, uh, I just find them harder to deal with than doing a blood knot. With a tippet ring, it's just a little oval or round stainless steel loop that you're, or, you know, ring that you'd put in place of your blood knot. So you'd tie off your, your tippet this side, this side off of it. Then you could put another one through it so you could have your right angle like I've got here. Personally, I drop more of those things before I get them tied on than it's worth to me. I find them no faster, no stronger. I don't see an advantage for me personally. And I really still prefer, even if you use a tippet ring, I still prefer to have the dropper loop off for what we just talked about, about having the line doubled up and the ability to change it up quickly and slide it up and down. Hope that helps you out.